introduce how to use SPSS. And for those of you at home, wherever you may be, or those of you here who already have the Simple Guide to SPSS book, there's a screenshot to the uh, introductory uh, screen of SPSS. I think it's on chapter one, page two, that shows a blank introductory screen that you can look at as we go along, if you'd like. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just tell you that uh, if you are worried about how to enter data in SPSS, let me ease your mind. How many of you have used spreadsheets of one sort or another? Quattro Pro, Excel, something like that. Can I see a show of hands? Any kind of spreadsheet on a computer. Okay, if you've ever used a spreadsheet, I know you have, you just don't realize it because you've helped me enter some, some data at one time. Um, that's what it's like entering data in SPSS. It's the same thing as working with a spreadsheet. So if you think spreadsheet when you enter data, you will be okay. What I'm going to do now, if you'll just look here, and it may differ from computer to computer, is I'll start the SPSS program. Because it's big and clunky, it takes a while to load. And uh, it may look different on different computers. Some computers will have an icon on there that you can double click, but sometimes you have to do what I did and actually go to the start menu, all programs, and look for the SPSS program and start it. This has really got to be a fairly decent computer. A word of warning to those of you at home or in a galaxy far away. Um, some computers, it takes a long time for SPSS to start because the computer is older or slower or it's not fragmented. So don't be nervous if you start SPSS and then the computer sits there for a bit and nothing happens. It could just be that it takes a while. If you try the two methods in the quick start guide that you should have if you're taking this course here or elsewhere that I mentioned on the first page and it's not working for you, um, then there may be something wrong with the installation of the SPSS program or computer. And the best thing to do is call whoever your provider is that gave you the SPSS program and see and make sure that it's installed properly. Um, but at any rate, you should now be able to see an opening screen for SPSS. And uh, the, the program is not designed to be particularly user friendly. I'll be the first to admit that. But when you start, um, you will see typically this square box up here, which is an option screen. And uh, I'd recommend for the purposes of our course and when you get started, you'll see a, a number of options from top to bottom. Run the tutorial is the first option. Type in data is the second option. Run an existing query is the third and so on. I would just click on type in data because that's what you're going to be doing when you're practicing uh, learning how to do FPSS. I know this initial window is kind of intimidating, but the options on there, the ones you need usually are either type in data, which is the second option in this version of SPSS, or the last ver uh, option in this top thing that's already clicked, which is open an existing data source. That's where you would go if you wanted to load a file that you've already created, that you already had made. But for now, we're going to type in data. Oh, thank you. I can use this either to hit people or do this. Wonderful. <laughs> So anyway, so the top option you don't need, run the tutorial. Type in data, the second option you do need. And it's already set to open an existing data source, but I won't ask you to do that now. So I would just concentrate on the type in data option. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change it to the type in data option and let it get started here. When you start SPSS, you're going to see a screen that looks like that. And it's a little intimidating at first, but if you think, again, in terms of spreadsheet, if you've ever worked with a spreadsheet or seen them, that's exactly how it operates. Um, before I say anything else, though, I have to emphasize this, and I repeat myself several times, but it's worth it in SPSS or in anything in statistics. I can't emphasize enough. Have your data set organized in, before you try to enter it. I would not recommend starting the program and saying, well, gosh, what variables will I use today? I feel like a gender variable. And then you start entering. You know, have it organized on a piece of paper 
or in some other way before you enter the data into the SPSS because you have a guide on how it should appear which you can look at and check as you're typing the stuff in. Uh, blah, blah. Okay. The key to this is to think of this grid in these terms. When you enter data into SPSS, each column is going to represent the values you have on some variable, let's say gender. Each row is going to represent the information you have for a particular person or a particular observation. So the easiest way to think of this is each column for right now is going to become a variable that you're going to enter. And all you have to do is keep track of which variable you would like to enter in the first column, which variable you would like to enter in the second column, and so on. But I think you can get the idea now that it's very, very important to have a data set organized on a piece of paper or, another, or you know, in some kind of word processor format so you can keep track of what it is you intend to enter. If you just do this uh, straight away without thinking about it, you can get into some confusion. So each column is going to represent a variable, and each row is going to represent an observation. And I'll get into that in a bit. Um, the other thing I'm going to recommend, and I'm leaving this blank because I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. The first column I recommend, which I'll show you in a little bit, should be just as a practice, uh, a subject number variable. In other words, this gray stuff over here isn't really a, a variable and it, it's just keeping track of, of which uh, row you're on. It doesn't do anything, it doesn't help you in any way. What you really need is a variable here, the first variable, call it subject or number or whatever, and number it from one to however many persons or things you have in your data set. That way you can go back and check on any particular survey or any particular person's entry that you're interested in. So as a general rule, even if you have other variables that you're interested in, make your first variable subject number or object number or whatever it is that helps you keep track of what's going on. Um, the other thing I would like to tell you, and I'll give you a demonstration uh, later, is that if you look at the bottom portion of this data entry screen, there are two tabs. There's a data view tab that you're in now. And there's a variable view tab that you can switch to, but I won't ask you to switch to that yet. You're in this data view tab right now. That's the place you can enter your variables, one variable per column. However many, the SPSS can tolerate huge numbers of variables because if you have a computer that's properly equipped, it can, it can store a large uh, amount of data. So there's no problem there. But this is where you enter your data. In a little while, we will learn how to click on this variable view tab. And when you move to that tab, you'll be able to see a list of your variables and how they're organized and change their names. And changing their names is very important because if you look up here, when SPSS starts, before you enter data, it just says VAR for variable, VAR for variable, VAR for variable. And what you're going to learn how to do is to click on that once you have information entered. You can't do it when there's no information there. I wish you could. It would make much more sense if you could pre-name your variables, but SPSS has some quirks, and this is one of them. You're going to learn how to double-click on that and change the variable name to something else. So you can change it to a name that you're familiar with. So if the first column is your subject number, you can call that subject. If your second column is IQ, you can change it from VAR to IQ. In other words, it's just a good thing to be able to keep track of whatever you're doing, what, what's going on. And when you get to the point of labeling your variables, you want to choose short, easy names. No more than eight letters, typically, because then you have to change your column width to make it legible. And just check, you know, pick names that represent whatever it is you measured so you can keep track of what you've measured and what you're doing. It's just, uh, that's pretty much common sense. And enter things slowly to avoid errors.